Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today I'm just going to give a few kind of tips and tricks and kind of a bit of a, a buyer's guide on the low-end cheap CNC machines. This here is my uh, CNC 2417T, I think it is, and I got this for about 300 Australian dollars. It's been a half decent learning machine, but I do actually kind of have some regrets on buying it now. Uh, so let's kind of just get stuck into this thing, basically. So as I said, I bought this as a bit of a learner CNC machine. It's relatively cheap at around 300 bucks. It's pretty cheap for a CNC. I mean, a lot of CNCs out there are a lot more expensive than this type of thing. And I think that the CNC market, there are so many of these cheap CNC machines out there, it's hard to know what's good and what's bad. So I'll give you some of my experiences from this and, ha and tell you some of the components that I think you need to be looking at when you're buying a cheap CNC machine. Having said all of that, before we just kind of jump into those things, while this CNC machine has not been the best for me, if you are looking to just cut like wood and soft-ish plastics, uh, and you kind of know what you're doing and you know a lot about end mills and flute bits and all that kind of stuff, uh, this CNC machine is fine, but then again, if you have all of that CNC knowledge, you're probably not buying a machine like this. Uh, so let's just get on to some of the things that I have discovered about these type of machines. And the first up is you want to make sure that the thing is rigid as it can possibly be. So when you're looking at the images of these things, look at how many uprights the actual machine has and what they're made of and how sturdy they seem. If they are a single uh, piece of aluminium 2020, which is what this stuff here is, then it's not going to be as sturdy as a braced piece of 2020 or in the case of this machine, uh, two pieces of 2020 extrusion. So that this machine gets some points for having that and it's actually one of the reasons I got this machine and not one of the lower down things. That is one of the tips that I had before I went in and bought this machine. So always make sure that your uprights are nice and solid. A CNC machine like this can really only cut things that are kind of weaker than itself, essentially, because all of the force of cutting through a material goes through this frame, uh, so the frame needs to be more rigid than whatever it is you're cutting through. Uh, having said all of that, this machine cannot cut metal, and the reason it can't cut metal is up the front here. There's two, actually three pieces up the front here that are my real big tips for this type of machine. First and foremost, the motor mount up here is 3D printed plastic. So this is an issue on a number of different fronts. One, as I said, it is not going to be stronger than a lot of the material that you're ever gonna try and cut through, uh, which makes it really hard to cut through um, metals and things like that. Also, because it's 3D printed, there's a, well, there was a little bit of play in it, and your or these guys are running screws directly into 3D printed plastic. So I put this thing together the first time, and it held the motor okay, but not great. And then I had to take the whole thing apart for maintenance at one point, and these screws didn't actually grab as well the second time round, which meant that the second time when I put everything back together, the motor could move inside the motor mount, which was absolutely terrible. And there's actually blue tape around the outside of the motor right now that is holding that motor so that it can't move when the 3D printed part is screwed together, which is obviously terrible. That's not something that you should have to do. This machine should not rely on blue painter's tape to hold the motor in place. That's ridiculous. And it's just, it, it's not a great idea. The second thing here is that this motor up the front is tiny. It is actually uh, the same size as a lot of cordless drill motors, which, oh, uh, sorry, I should say a lot of 12 volt cordless drill motors, which it's, it's okay for stuff like wood and soft plastics, but if you're going to try and cut into anything harder and you really need the spindle speed and the spindle torque, this motor that's in here is not going to cut it. This one is a little bit harder to tell from a lot of the images. This motor and the motor that's the size up that works a lot better look very similar in images. However, usually when you see the motor that's the size up in a CNC image, it will have a big fan on top that blows air down over the motor to keep it cool as it's running. 
So that can be an indication of the size of motor that is in the machine that you're about to buy. So look for stuff like that. And yeah, they you just kind of need to avoid motors like this if you can possibly do it. The other good tip for trying to avoid a motor like this is my third tip, which is how the bit is actually held in place. On this machine, there is a little brass collet down here which holds the machine in place or holds the bit to the actual spindle motor. And this is an issue on a couple of fronts. One, uh, it means that this whole assembly is a lot longer, which means there is a lot more kind of twisting force on the motor as you try and cut through things. And two, it means that the bit itself is held in place with two grub screws and the motor is held in place, or sorry, the brass itself is held to the motor with two grub screws. So when you first get this and the bushing and the, the collet is, well it's not a collet, it's a um, coupler, it's a br little brass coupler. When the brass coupler is brand new, it's totally fine, everything is kind of a pretty snug fit inside, but after you've used the machine for a little while, some of the brass wears away, and what ends up happening is that the grub screws are basically the only thing holding your actual bit in place. And what that means is that those bits uh, are really hard to get straight because you basically have to hold it straight and then tighten grub screws to try and get the thing perfect. And even then, if you let it wear down even further than that, then you've got four degrees that it can wobble and grub screws coming through, sorry, two degrees that it can wobble and grub screws on one of those degrees, which means the other one, it's always gonna be able to wobble around. Uh, so this thing here is the big thing to avoid. If you see a little brass piece in under the motor holding in the actual tip, don't buy the machine. It is not going to be a good machine. Um, so the reason that some of these machines have this is this motor. So like I said, this motor is not the standard motor uh, and it's not even a really good motor. And the output shaft is a 3.2 millimeter shaft, which is where this um, brass piece comes in. The brass connector has 3.2 millimeter hole all the way through which holds the bit and then also the motor shaft. The size motor up has a 5mm uh, motor shaft which means it can actually take an E37 collet which is a proper CNC collet which means that it has fingers and they grab hold of the actual bit as you tighten a kind of a, yeah, adjustment set around them which means that you don't have to worry about getting everything centered. Those fingers are always going to hold the bit perfectly centered and it just helps with everything. So if you see one of these, it means that the motor is underpowered and it also means that your coupling down to your bit is terrible, absolutely shite. Um, do not ever get a machine with a brass collet like this that holds everything together. These things, they're okay for engraving and stuff, but I have been running HDPE, uh, which is a high density plastic and I've been trying to cut through high density plastic. It worked okay for a little while and then wear started to take hold in this brass. I then also did mess up and have it hit one of my clamps at one point. That of course was a bit of a user error, but it's just compounded the problems that this thing has had. Uh, it was going that way and the bit was wandering a little bit as it was cutting before the incident. After the incident, the bit wanders everywhere. It's almost impossible to actually get straight inside that little brass thing. And it's just been a bit of a nightmare. Um, I have regrets buying this machine because yeah, this, this machine, it's just not what I needed. And if I spent an extra couple of hundred dollars, I would have had a machine with a bigger motor with a proper collet. And it actually would have had a bigger bed on it as well. So. My advice to you is if you're trying to just kind of get in and wet your feet and touch the ground with CNC machining, but you don't really care, you don't have a specific thing in mind, then get a really cheap machine like this. It was fun to put together. It took me, I don't know, kind of three-ish hours or something to put the whole machine together. It was a good build process. I was happy with all of that. Um, there was a little bit of interpreting the Chinese instructions that came with it, but that's all part of the process with these cheap low-end machines. And to me, that was actually kind of part of the fun. But if you're looking for something that's going to have a specific purpose, if you're looking for something that you want to cut through uh, thicker plastics or actual metals like aluminium and brass and copper and that type of thing, 
don't go a low end machine. It, don't get something this small. Look at the collet that is holding in the bit. If it is this little brass connection piece, avoid it. Run for the hills, find something else, don't do that. The other thing to look at is the step motors on the machine. So the step motors on the machine that is in front of me right now are no bigger than standard 3D printing motors, which are powerful enough for moving a head around, but they're not going to be powerful enough to cut through metals and things like that. They're barely powerful enough to get through uh, this HDP plastic that I'm running. Uh, so take a look at those and just have, as a, have a quick look at the images and see if you can tell what kind of size they are. It is a little bit hard in images to see how big some of these stepper motors are, but if you can get a rough gauge, it is going to help you in the long run because you'll be able to avoid a machine like this. Yeah, so having said that, next year, I will probably buy myself a new machine. Uh, so if you guys have any suggestions or recommendations, please let me know down in the comments below. Or if you're a company and you have a machine that you think is going to suit me better, please either um, comment down below or hit me up in my emails that is in my about section on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, there you go. I hope this has been helpful to some of you. Um, and hopefully it helps some of you avoid the mistakes that I've made uh, in buying this machine. Yeah, I think that's about it. I hope you guys have a good holidays and I will see you in the next video.